Scream Queens. Welcome to Screen Queens, the podcast where two comedians watch, review, and gossip about everything on your screens. I'm Beck Charlwood, and with me is my beautiful co-host, Alex J. And we are joined by a very special guest, the pod father himself. <laughs> The man that gave birth to our original podcast. Wow. First, yeah. the original podcast fought from his loins physically. My loins. Mm. They mm-hmm. were widened for you two, those <laughs> loins. They were widened. Had to give birth to a beautiful set of sisters. It is the daddy of all cinephiles, <laughs> Alexi Tolliopoulos. Wow, thank you very much, my mm. dear friends. What a pleasure it is to be in your new studio. Thank yes. you yeah, for coming. Yeah, it's gorgeous in here. Thank you Pretty for making cute. the journey. My pleasure. Mm. It was a short journey. It, sure it was. was awesome. <laughs> two suburbs, in fact. <laughs> yeah, two suburbs. Within the inner west. It. Yeah, of course, we love the inner west of Sydney, one of the most beautiful places on planet Earth. So mm. stunning. Very stunning. You want some concrete, you got to get down to the inner west, Absolutely. baby. Absolutely. But it's was, beautiful concrete. I was forged in this concrete, you know. Yeah. That's it. I didn't see a lawn for most of my life, <laughs> you know. Oh. I'm familiar with the concrete slabs. Yeah. You learn about backyards, front yards. Oh, yes. I didn't have a front yard. I didn't have a backyard growing up. Mm. I had a front yard. Whoa. Yes. Rare in the inner west. Very rare. Had a little backyard. Some of the places I grew up in, but the main house, no backyard. That was the biggest culture shock for Mm. me when Mm. moving to Sydney. I was like, wait. Most people live in apartments. Yeah. Not everyone has a front yard, backyard, and garage. Mm-hmm. What the heck? <laughs> Same for me after moving down from the central coast. Yeah. yeah, suburbia. It's a compact city. Yeah, we love the compact nature we of this it. town. We love it. I love it. How are you, Alexi? Oh, I'm beautiful. <laughs> Extremely well. Perfect. I'm excited about the world. You have a podcast. I was going to say new podcast, but it's been around for a while. A minute, now. almost a year, not a year yet. Uh, still a while away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've been around for a minute at the last video store. Yeah. It's yes. so good. Oh, thank Holy you, shit. Alex. Alex birthed it <laughs> from her loins oh into this God. world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly, the incestuous nature of our relationships, <laughs> all of birthing this each world. other. It's, it's like Greek god stuff, you know. It's, crazy. it's like the Greek mythology. Out so good with yeah. all of the f- <laughs> genetics that went into I it. Know. <laughs> yeah, but it's been awesome. It's been so good having very exciting people on it recently. Mm. Well, name drop. Always, name drop. We had yeah, Paul Kelly, play. the iconic Australian musician, wow. which was so exciting. Because he we- has his new. TV, TV series movie. movie. He's got movie. a movie called mm. How to Make Gravy yes. um, with Daniel Henshaw, Damon Harriman, and mm. also got Hugo Weaving. <gasps> um, so that's like a beautiful, that's a really nice Love Christmas him. movie. It's adaptation of How to Make Gravy. And Megan Washington co-wrote it and did the music for She's and stuff. So cool. It's a, I love it's you, a, Megan. I, I reckon it's a big recommendation for Christmas. Like mm. it's just like captures a lovely Christmas melancholy feeling that I think is a necessary ingredient for a good Christmas film. Yes. So Sorry, can really I ask, lovely. have you seen it already? I have seen it, yeah. <gasps> I hosted a Exclusive. after preview screening. <sighs> um, oh. And that was great because it was a Q&A with Megan Washington, the director, mm. and a couple of producers. And so that was really nice. Um, really fun. A lot of, for the first time, cast and crew seeing the movie and stuff. Mm. Um, so it's lovely. Really, I think it's a really lovely film. Really lovely we film. We are going to see the premiere On this Thursday. week. This week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Very yeah. excited. Lovely film. Yeah. And apparently there's a lot of like Australian musicians and stuff in there yeah, as well. Yeah, so much. So like cool. that. Um, and I asked them about that and they said that they wanted the film to feel like you were inside a song. So they wanted to have like lots of Australian musicians that were just filling out the roles, you know? Oh, so it's awesome. like you'll see so many people like – Briggs is in it quite a bit, but then you'll be like, oh, cool, like Aiden. A- um, Aiden Clark. Aiden, Aiden Clark's in, in it. And Aiden Patience Clark. Hodgins. Oh, yeah. sure. From, yeah. from yeah. Not On Your Rider. Rider. Yeah, Fantastic exactly. Fantastic music quiz show. Yeah. yeah. And you can see live in many cities around That's Australia. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Brendan McLean and like all these cool people mm. just like popping up in it. I think it's a lovely film. Oh, my God. I'm so yeah, excited. Yeah, lovely film. Yeah. Uh. Beautiful recommendation. Beautiful recommendation from yeah. me to you and all the listeners. Yeah, but all last video store, few, maybe a few more people from that movie might be popping up on that show soon around Christmas time. Very cool. So uh, keep your eyes peeled. Mm. And I say to all the ladies out there listening, we have one of the great heartthrobs of cinema, Jonathan Reese Myers from Bandit Like Beckham, Ooh. Velvet Goldmine, Match Point, The Tudors. 
Uh, he popped on and I was the most starstruck I've ever been in my entire life. Really? You nervous? I was genuinely nervous, but in the zone with him, I was like <sighs> melting. Cause I was like, this is such a, this is a guy. Whenever it's, that's who I get starstruck by. People from when I grew up mm-hmm. or like mm-hmm. people from yep. things that I love when I was a kid or an early teenager. That's who I get starstruck by mm-hmm. now. And it was like, Ben like Beckham was my favorite movie when I was probably like 12 years, 12, really? 11 years old wow. or whenever it came out. Oh. And then um, Match Point was a huge movie for me. Like all those kind of films that he was in, in an early point in his career. Mm-hmm. Um, and even a lot of Tudors, that TV show, he was that, that Elvis um, TV movie as well where he played Elvis. Oh. I loved that growing up. Okay. And so it was all these like things. I just go, oh my God, this guy is so hunky yeah. and I'm just like I was just so uh smiling the whole time and like just starstruck it was bizarre that's so nice was he easier to talk to was it a well good I didn't have to say much oh, I just would say love. like 10 words and he would go on and Classic like you actor. know real actor vibe mm. but he loves movies and he brought like he brought some very interesting movies up that I'm like I don't know when we would have had uh like he brought this Russian art house movie and I was like Oh, I've not seen much of Tarkovsky, this director. So I caught up with the film and I go, this is the best experience I've had all year is watching this movie. So I had some very deep, thoughtful conversation about cinema with him. And you go, that's exciting to have like this fucking movie star on and talk about not only his great movies that I love, but then his taste as well was very cool. Yeah. (laughs) Damn. Well, enough about these celebrities. Yes. And what they're watching. We want to know what you've been watching. <laughs> Whoa. Well, allow me to put the 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 cover up on the big screen and mm. to flick on the small screen for Whoa. a change. Look at you guys. Huge. Yes. Huge to me. We're going to talk about a TV show from 30 years ago that I started <laughs> okay. watching. Oh, my God. There's Amazing. the Alexi yes. of it. There's there the Alexi of it. <laughs> I needed an, a Law & Order replacement recently. Because okay. I've watched uh, – Law & Order is like my favorite show because I can go – it's the same shit over and over wow. again. I didn't the, know that. That's mm-hmm. so fun. Love yeah. Law & Order. Yeah. Love One SVU. of the best theme songs Love it. Oh. of all time. Never skip it. Yeah. I've never yeah. once skipped it on the on the stream. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need something like that. But I like early Law & Order. I like 90s. So I go, I want a 90s TV show mm-hmm. where it's like kind of the same shit every episode. And I go, mm-hmm. that's what I'm after. And so I, for the first time, I started watching – E R. Oh, yes. okay, perfect. I've my never God. seen an episode, but oh my I, God, yeah. I'm, we're obsessed. This really? Early Clooney, right? Early Clooney. Oh it's like you're seeing this movie star be born. Wow. It, was an, it was an episode I saw where something sad happens. Every episode, that's why I like. It. <laughs> you get a little <laughs> sadness, extreme some love. tragedy. You get, you get all the <laughs> textures that, all mm. that you want, but something sad happens, and it's just a close-up of him, and there's like one tear. <gasps> dangling in the corner of his eye that drips down and you go movie star you can't that guy's a movie star i mean i know because i've seen 30 years of his career since <laughs> sure. this, but you go you watch you it go, it's say. undeniable uh, yeah but it's so it's yeah. great i'm obsessed with it we watched um What's we're nine that? episodes in we watched like six oh, episodes great. or seven episodes in a row just Holy bang 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 shit. yeah it's are like you, eight hours we just threw are away. you becoming attached to the characters and stuff yes i love yeah them. okay great love were you them. attached to the look characters in law and order yeah somewhat you know like <laughs> some like the you go through some because there's so i've seen you know been watching that show for probably 25 years sure. or whatever. <laughs> so it's like there's some generations you like some you're like oh not so much or okay. whatever but um yeah it's this is more of a bit more of a soap opera with yeah. some procedural uh medical room type shit in there mm. whereas like law and order it's like you get a little bit of drama between the characters but not it's that mostly much. the cases most yeah. of the cases but it's just like that's what i need i go <sighs> i just want to show that's the exact same thing every time mm-hmm. and it don't matter if i get up to like um go brush my teeth or whatever i can just come back in and i'll figure shit out that's what i'm after See, I need that. that's yeah. what I need. is there any other little cameos of people early on in their career Huge. that you love to go <gasps> You see, you'll have to open IMDb every episode. Ah. There's like all these famous people doing things. You go, or like a character actor, you go, oh, who's that? Oh my God, it's Garrett Morris from Saturday Night Live. That's him <gasps> there. And like all this kind of stuff. And there's like right. one of the early episodes, there's this woman who comes in, uh, an older woman, and she has lost her memory. Um, and she's, but she, she won't talk, but she sings. And she's singing all these beautiful jazz standardy type things. 
And it's just like, this woman's got the most beautiful voice. Like, who is this person? And then, like, it's a great little storyline in one of the episodes, like a B story. And everyone's like, who's this person? I'm trying to figure out who she is. She's some fake, she's character. That's not a real person. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, this, she's this great singer and none of them knew who she was. But then I look up who the actress was or it came up in the credits. I'm like, I'm like oh, my God, it's Rosemary Clooney, George Clooney's auntie mm. who sing Mumbo Italiano and, like, you know, all these famous songs from back in the 50s oh and 40s. My God. Oh, my God. Of course it's Rosemary Clooney. i just never seen her old. I've only seen what? her sing her songs and be in, like, the Bing Crosby movies and all that shit. And so, so it's all very lovely. Very wow. lovely show. Oh, Nepo, cool. baby. Yeah, beautifully yeah. written. Beautifully <laughs> written, too. Yeah. I'm yeah, having yeah. the same because I'm watching Gilmore Girls for the first time. Whoa. That's the one I'm going to jump into next. Oh. Yes, yeah. I knew there was another Reco recently for a similar watch. Mm. So good. I know it's been three weeks since we recorded, like, mm. an episode, so I can't remember if I already talked about this on the main feed. Wow. What a show. Mm. Yeah. I understand the hype. And it's the same thing. Every episode, there's a new character. You're like, oh, my God, this freaking Sean mm-hmm. Gunn. Yeah. Like, yeah. Acting like a dweeb in the corner. Like, he's <laughs> fucking crazy. Yeah. Chad Michael Murray. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, even I just seeing, I just like Melissa McCarthy and her mm. beginnings is incredible right? to yeah. watch before she became Melissa McCarthy and all of her tropes and the stuff that we love her for. Just like raw. Every yeah. time she comes on the screen, I'm like, that's a star. There's an Absolutely. Yeah. That's the, Clo- that's the Clooney tear moment. Yeah. Man. Do you know that, you know the Brian Jordan Alvarez? Yes. Yeah. So you know that video of him going like, <laughs> it's like, what uh, what, what can you offer oh, my, my daughter? daughter. Nothing, Nothing. Only, only this. this. You know, that's what? Sean Gunn from Gil- in Gilmore Girls, like that audio of that clip. What? Yeah. That's, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Or it's like a short film from Gilmore Girls that Sean Gunn's in or something no like that. That's, but that's Sean Gunn's voice. <gasps> I can't wait yeah. to see that in real time. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, God, yeah. cool. That rarely do, does a day pass without hearing, what's that supposed yeah. to be about, baby? Yeah. I even watch it. I watch it every time. Every Love time. It. And they go, oh, let's watch a few more. Let's go back and watch the last three or four that I like. Yeah, another hundred and I'll finally watch English Teacher. <laughs> English Teacher's very good. I know. And everyone's, I just, I'm, I'm busy with the Gilmore Girls, babe. I'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> there's just simply too many great things to watch on the screen. I know. And the there's screens. simply too many screens almost. Absolutely. Yeah. We're surrounded by screens in Recently, this world. Yeah. yeah. I've caught myself through doing three at once and I'm like, you need to stop. Oh, God. Yeah. You need to calm down. Exactly. Yeah. What's the three? TV. Mm, three. TV. TV while in the cinema will be on for <laughs> yeah. No, it'll be uh, TV. Nintendo Switch. Oh, wow. And then... Laptop on the lap or on your phone or something. I don't want to admit this, but uh, TikTok going in the corner. Wow. And, me, and then I I only got five minutes of this. So I was like, no. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I have to stop. <laughs> One Please. of these has to shut down. <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> Get to the end of the day, I'm like, why can't I sleep? I'm like so stimulated. <laughs> Scroll, what's happened to me? I don't think, I, maybe I didn't drink enough water. Like, no, you've blown your serotonin into oblivion. <laughs> Times three. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> Speaking of the small screens, though, yes. I hear you have a small screen recommendation for I us today. I do. Wow. I have one that I know you will love. Are you a cat person, Alexi? Um, well, considering animals. the bird yes, yeah. Alexi oh, flipped to God. my cat Drama. upon his entrance into yeah. my household this morning, I'd say oh, no. Oh, yes. Let Came it be known I'm a villain to the felines. I had no idea. No, I, I, like, I affectionately I, said, and this is my cat puppy, and yeah. the bird was flipped. And I just flipped it off. But I get it. He's got that face. He's got <gasps> yeah. a face. Don't flip up our viewers. How dare you? <laughs> No, no, we do, worked so hard to get our 120 subscribers on YouTube. Please don't flip <laughs> them off, Alexi. Stop. We promised we'd never flip guys. them off. Oh, my God. No. Shut it down. Shut it down. Uh. Shut it down. <laughs> Beep. No. Yeah. Um, but I prefer cats to dogs. Okay. Yeah, okay. if that means anything. It does. Wow. Yeah, you see what I flipped to a dog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that has to be blurred. Yeah, that, that has, has to be blurred. You just get up in there for fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I found okay. a series that you will love, Ooh. and it's called Shop Cats. The show. Uh, oh, it's a it's a full show. It's a show on what? On 
Instagram and oh. TikTok. It's a comedian called <laughs> oh. Michelle Adonna. Yeah. And, uh, I thought it was a real TV show. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, that I'm just watching yeah. in 90 Second Reels. <laughs> um, the best way to watch television. Uh, it's on Instagram and TikTok. And basically she's this gorgeous Latina comedian in New York who goes into bodegas and oh, meets wow. the cats in there. Oh, okay. I love yeah. it. And it's so cute. I am not even, well, I'm a cat person, but I can't touch them or go near them mm. because I'm yeah. highly allergic. You're allergic. Yeah. Wow. So this is one of the few ways that I can actually enjoy cats. And, and observe cats. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm following it now. Well, I'm doing so it immediately. Good. Shop you. cat. Shop cat. Shop cat. Here we go. Shop cat. I'm following Shop cat. up. Um, and she's such a great host. She's so warm and fun and Aww, yay. like, it's just great. She keeps, she's passionate about cats and wow. Yeah, you this can is tell. awesome. Yeah. The editing is also fantastic. Whoever the editor is, mm. shut out. Nice. Shut out. So it's my small screen. Wow. Rec. Excellent. Mm. Um, I have, uh, I'd spoken about this on the Patreon, but I want to bring it to the main. <laughs> Can't recommend enough season two of shrinking. Are you a shrinking <gasps> fan? I'm not a shrinking fan. Whoa. But I've not seen it, so it's not like oh, I'm okay. against shrinking. You're not, yeah. It sounded like you had a stance with yeah. that. You were like, you know what? I got something to say. I'm not a fan. About no. this delightful all round <laughs> cast of super size. <laughs> yeah, no, I just don't watch TV, so I don't yeah. know. Except for. Except yeah. for yeah. 30 year old shows. Yeah. <laughs> if you can prove yourself to have a lasting legacy, then I will go in. <laughs> but I cannot go for one stuff. I need 30 mm-hmm. years of being able to go through reading old reviews. <laughs> yeah. putting it. If you've got a few episodes in the best TV shows of all time, then mm. I will go in. You go Sweeney Sweeney Who, Jacob Elordi, why? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm the same with movies. I'm mm-hmm. only allowed to watch movies that are 30 years old. So I, wow. I'm, I'm currently in. 1984, very wow. exciting. <laughs> I hate to tell you, but that's, I mean. 40, <laughs> that's 40 years ago. 94. You're only yeah. watching the movie 1984. Yeah, that's all I'm doing. Look after your mental only health. allowed to watch movies with years as the titles. <laughs> it's a system, don't question it. <laughs> We've worked it out. Um, but yeah, Shrinking Season 2, cannot recommend it enough. It's such a lovely, funny, mm. hilarious show. Like I laugh out loud all the time. It's so well written and it is... I'll say it again, Harrison Ford's third act, like as a lovely, Mm. just feeling emotional old man. Whoa. Not a dick. I mean, he's a dick, but he's he's a shrink. Yeah. He's a dick. He's gruff. He's Mm. not a dick. He's gruff. You you have to let You know there's there's soul behind there. And there's moments where he's he's cried a couple of times. Like you see Harrison Ford cry like that. It's beautiful. Are you crying watching the show? Is that the kind of show it is? No, I don't think I've cracked a tear yet. Okay. Maybe in one moment, it is centered around a bit of a tragic kind of mm. inciting incident that started before the show mm. started. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, it's just really, it's just very funny. So it's a comedy. Yep. Okay. Cool. Comedy. Bill Lawrence, I think, is the EP Mr. on it. Mr. Scrubs. Mr. Scrubs. I literally was going to think of a show that like has a lot of emotion in it, but doesn't make you cry. And mm. I was like, Scrubs. Scrubs, exactly. Scrub. And his wife is one. Of, uh, I can't remember her name, but he, he, she's one of the main cast as well, who was also in Scrubs. But um, it's great. I really can't recommend it enough. And Apple TV Plus famously doesn't promote, so we'll do it for yeah. them. Wow, okay. I will I gotta get Apple TV Plus again, I reckon. Mm. If you're gonna delve into TV shows, I'd say that's the prestige mm. kind of area you'd wanna potentially jump yes. into is Apple TV Plus. Because everyone telling me about that Gary Oldman TV show that I'll like. Oh, Slow I've heard horses. Of, yes, yes, yeah. yes I've heard that's horses. fantastic. I have a lot of recs for that. Yeah. yeah, I've been hearing that's good. I wanna watch that Colin Farrell Noir show, mm. the Vince Vaughn. Bad Monkey. Yeah, I gotta watch that yeah. Bad Monkey. I've heard that's good. Heard that's good. Cam James texted me about it. Okay. Effusively saying that I will get into it. So oh, okay. I will one day watch that. <laughs> How many people do you have in your life who just desperately want you to get into television? He's the main one. Is he? Like yeah. I think it drives him crazy. Is this yes. why Total Reboot needed to end? <laughs> yes, because he likes TV and I don't. And I'm yeah. like, I'll never get into a TV show. That blows and my mind. Mitch or as well, probably those are the two uh, that are really hassle me. Like you got to give a TV show. I'm like, it's not going to happen, man. Like yeah. what am I going to do? Wow. You're busy. ER have been recommended for 30 years. And, and I just finally watched you. it, you know? It Turns takes out. a long time time for it to crack through yeah okay <laughs> they're always you gotta go oh but i'll get to it yeah yeah that's what i do with movies oh yeah. it's, on, it's on the list it's on the list so <laughs> in 30 years we'll have you on to review shrinking yeah can't i can't wait, wait. i can't wait uh, in the I diary bet we will have to wait we will have to wait <laughs> 
Okay, should we get into the meat and potatoes of what's brought us here today, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Finally, we've been dying to talk about this movie for weeks. Mm, we were embargoed. We were, <laughs> oh my god! We were strapped down by <laughs> lawyers and red tape, and Our then first ever red carpet that we went to. Yes, and then we got. Uh, uh, all of us, I think, got sick all at once, and then yes. now we're finally here mm-hmm. to talk about the movie Gladiator Two. Fully, I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or Gladiator I I for I, any I. Roman yes. numeral heads out or there. Or Gladiator <laughs> Yeah. Oh. That's how I like reading oh. it. As. Every time I read a like Make you know, it a screen, Gladiator sounds beautiful. <laughs> Why don't they do the whole movie That's in Italian so accent? Appropriate. They should have. My God, there's. They allergic to casting Italians in these kind of things, you know. Oh they got an Irish guy. <laughs> they got an American guy. They got Spanish an English guy. guy. They got a Spanish Chilean guy. Yes. They got a Dutch lady. Yes. <laughs> yes. Get an Italo up there. Where's Vince Colosimo or something like yes. that? Oh my God. They got to get the La Palia brothers to be in to be playing the emperors. <laughs> We gotta get Jonathan and Anthony oh, LaPaglia playing those there. Emperor Brothers, you know? <laughs> so some English and American kids. We need these. Only guys Australian up there. Italians yeah, allowed. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's Pia what I Miranda? Oh my god. Absolutely. Now that's beautiful. Um, my hero Pia Miranda up there. I would love to see that. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so we did attend the red carpet mm-hmm. premiere and yep. we just happened to run into yeah, you and yes. your beautiful partner, Roisin. Yes, we were, we were seated together. We wandered around together. Mm-hmm. We enjoyed the sights of Darling Harbour yeah. together. We saw Paul Meskel together. Yes. Beautiful. What a great evening. It was, well... So- <laughs> yeah, a great evening for a few a bits of it. It was evening. lovely. For no, parts of it, yeah. yeah. The evening itself was lovely. The mm. red carpet of it mm-hmm. all was gorgeous. Everyone looked fucking good. Good. Yes, Merrick's around wearing his, oh, yeah. his <laughs> regalia. Watts was there yeah. in costume. He was in costume. In yeah, it was so fun. Wear. I had a sick thought to do the same thing, but sexy, oh, yeah. obviously. But sexy. <laughs> it was the day before Halloween, and yeah. I was like, this would be fun. So glad I did, and it was such a formal affair. It yes. was quite formal. You As a, well, catching we, a few We hours. had thought, do we do some kind of like stunt stunt wear yeah. situation and then we're like no this is our first red carpet mm-hmm. let's get the vibe the lay of the land yes yeah. it's so and, glad we yeah. did <laughs> but it was so fun and then we got to like yeah walk along the red carpet get some cool photos and then we went inside and um decided whether we wanted to line up for an hour to get proper photos yeah. mm. we decided against mm. yeah and then we went upstairs and it was in the ICC theatre, which is so huge. Massive. And so steep, mm. the seating. Um, so I felt a little bit cramped and claustrophobic for it, but that's only because this movie is two and a half hours long. Mm. Yes. And the snacks were – I forgot to eat beforehand. I also forgot to eat Classic. beforehand. And so like, – Is that, is that cr- tricky 6 p.m. arrival time? Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right in dinner time. And mm. then we're not out till 11. <laughs> It's my first bit of advice if you're going to go say eat beforehand. This is a how-to red carpet premiere. Yeah, yeah take your <laughs> sandwich, right put a little sandwich in your bag. A sandwich. <laughs> yeah, they, we saw them do a little Q&A. At the oh, yeah. Well, not even a Q&A. They were just like, this An is intro a movie. To the movie. This yeah. is a movie you got to see on the big screen. That's what everyone, every, <laughs> what everyone knows. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's great to share it with an audience and it's the kind of movie – that deserves to be seen on the big screen. Yeah, it's like, we get it, you want money. Say. Just yes. we, You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> We're here already. Yeah. We're doing it. <laughs> so, Alexi, from your experience with premieres, do yep. you think those people from the cast were watching in the audience with us or were they backstage Not or would they have possibly left? I would say uh, for that one, I'm sure they left. Okay. Um, but every now and then you'll see them want to watch it. I'd mm. say usually if it's an Australian actor – yeah. They might want to see with Australian crowds or mm. it might be, oh, it's more likely they've got friends here so they want to go out yeah. and party and stuff. Yeah. I'd say for most people touring, uh, it's maybe they're only in Australia or Sydney for like three days. Mm. So mm. it might be their best chance to go out and go to Pellegrino 2000. Yes. <laughs> go to, you know, go to the Ivy, do all like, you know, the fun Sydney shit or whatever. Yeah. I tell you what, celebrity who was in town and – wasn't in the movie, but did come to the premiere and was probably sitting oh, a yeah. couple of rows behind us. Maddie Healy from yes. the 1975. Yeah, I didn't know he that. Was there. Yeah, he was there. 
Was he in that annoying group behind us? No. No, 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 no. no, no. no. Those were the influencers. Yes, Yes, they they really were. I know know some of them. Yeah. Yeah, I was too scared to turn around because my face would have, I wouldn't have made the noise shush, but my eyes would have said shush. Did a couple of times, you know, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to do the John Mulaney. Excuse me. Dad. Yeah. yeah. Are you, Are you going, going to talk, talk the, the entire time? time? Yeah. <laughs> because it was very funny because like they sat in and it felt like a sketch. Like yeah. they sat behind us so loud and we were just mm. talking about content and they yeah. were, then they did a TikTok trend thing. Yeah. It was like yeah. oh, it was like a sketch. And I've always wondered because they always have the flash on in like these mm. videos mm. and I'm like that must be so disturbing to the people around you. And it is. It is. Mm. And it is. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bizarre experience to just going like, oh, the, but it's like, oh, do I really give a shit enough mm. to like go, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it is this, the point of this premiere is to give the movie exposure mm. and exactly. let all these people see it so we can share it on our platforms like we're doing now. Yeah. Mm. Take note. Um, <laughs> and invite us back to another one, please. Um, but they were, sh- they, did, they did shush when the movie started, yes. which was excellent. Yeah, Thank so God. then you can hear their reactions to things and that's always nice, like mm. you're hearing yeah. some you know, some people be very excited by an action sequence. Like, that's fun. Mm-hmm. My favorite part is at one point, <laughs> something happened in the movie, and one of goes, oh, not the revenge. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I love it. Like, it's that's, giving vengeance. It's yeah. giving revenge. <laughs> Great. Yeah, it's kind of the whole theme of the movie is revenge. That's the whole way. theme of Rome, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, let's talk about the movie itself. Yes. How do we feel about it, guys? Um, I would say that uh, the original Gladiator as well is not really my cup of tea. Like, mm-hmm. it's not really the kind that. of film that I get excited about. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a big on the kind of ancient or medieval epic type stuff. So a lot of that Roman Empire stuff. Uh, would fall into that category yeah, for me. Yeah. Mm. I kind of think that if it's not sh- actual Shakespeare, I'm not always that excited by it. Like I would love yeah. to see Julius Caesar or Antony and Cleopatra. Like I okay. love those. Um, but then when it is this kind of historical fiction type stuff, I'm mm. not. it's not really my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. And Ridley Scott is one of those filmmakers that has made a lot of great movies – a lot of masterpieces, quote unquote. Shout out to Alien. Yeah, like films that I definitely do love. Mm. But I'll probably put him in a similar category of someone like Christopher Nolan or Stanley Kubrick, who has made a lot of great films. Uh, and I recognize them as a great filmmaker, but I do not feel passion for their work. Yeah, I do okay. not feel um, an intense love for mm-hmm. their work. Mm-hmm. Not really a Ridley Scott guy. As someone who can only think of Alien, <laughs> and they hear Ridley Scott and this movie that we just saw, what are yeah. some other Ridley Scott titles? Well, for the one that I would say that I do feel that passion and excitement for is Thelma and Louise. Like, I think that oh, is an exciting yes. masterpiece. Okay. It's most different from a lot of his other work because it's like one that I feel like has a lot of warmth, a lot of excitement, a lot of interesting directorial choices. Mm. But then as well, he's also made Blade Runner. Oh. He's made um, Black Hawk Down. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, a couple. I'm trying to think of the other big, big ones. It's probably another big one. Blade I'm Runner twenty forty nine. No, that Denny oh. Villeneuve did oh, that with that okay. one. Mm-hmm. But like a, like a few big major, his, huge, like yeah. huge films and stuff. But yeah, he's just not someone that excites me too much. Really. Would you? Would it? Be fair to say that a lot of his masterpieces were from a time a while ago, or has he made some good ones in recent years? Some good years? ones, recent years. I, I love this one he made. And it's so against everything I just said because it is like a medieval movie. Okay. Mm. Uh, but the last duel with Ben Affleck and oh. uh, Matt Damon oh. and Adam Driver oh. and Jodie Comer, I thought that wow. was excellent. I, mean, I really loved that Holy film. Okay. Ben Affleck's amazing in it. I but love him. But ben Affleck and Matt Damon co-wrote it with another writer – and um, I thought that was excellent, like really, really interesting, really well made. But then he also did the House of Gucci. Oh. Um, and he did Napoleon, which <laughs> I was so not good. So we don't know anything about directors. Yeah, <laughs> so he's, he makes probably one or two movies a year usually. Yeah, okay. Um, and so he's like, he's very busy. He's a workhorse director, journeyman filmmaker. Keeps He's very active and very busy. And he's very, I think, very thoughtful 
filmmaker and very funny in interviews and all that stuff. He's very charming, mm. I think. But just like he's – a lot of his films are not the stuff that excites me because I don't feel uh, emotional connection. Mm. I don't feel like a – you know, like I go to the movies to feel stuff. Mm. And a lot of his movies are a little bit emotionally cold, so I don't yeah. often feel stuff when I watch them. Mm. Um, but he is a great filmmaker. And I would say that Gladiator 2 – because he's so similar to Gladiator 1, mm. it just does not have stuff for me in it or stuff yeah. that yes. excites me in it. Um, but I would say what it does have in it that I love, love, loved, um, it has one of the most exciting performances from one of my favourite actors of all time, Denzel Washington. Oh, my as God. As this antagonistic character. I just thought that was so exciting. Every yeah. moment he was on screen, every physical choice he makes with this character of, like, playing with these jewellery, these rings and stuff on his hand, like, that's so interesting. That's so mm. fascinating. And really, Scott and he have made... They made at least one other movie together, uh, American Gangster, oh, okay. with Russell Crowe. Oh, yeah. Wow, right. Russell Crowe from Gladiator. There we go, a little of that. Uh, uh, and Eric Banner, another Aussie. Um, oh. I think he's – maybe he's not in it. I've seen it for like 15 <laughs> years. I don't. Maybe I just made that up. Um, but um, I like that movie quite a bit. But uh, Denzel Washington, one of his frequent collaborators was really Scott's brother, Tony Scott, who's one of my favourite guys. Yeah. And their movies together, a lot of fun, like Deja Vu, Man on Fire. Man on Fire. Lots of this. That. Love that movie. Love, 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 love. Holy one of my favourite movies. So I think that he brings this energy to this film – that is a little bit like only slightly contemporary, which I think makes it exciting. Mm. But because Denzel is one of the great Shakespearean actors, I think mm. he's able to Always forget that. infuse so much great energy into this and excitement and the intrigue. But uh, like it's hard to say because I, I think it just brings uh, like when he's on screen, you can't, you cannot you can't stop being interested. Mm, like yeah. it's just, there's all this like double play that he's playing and like how he's presenting himself and the, the, the elements of conflicting perspective and power structure and status, how they keep evolving through this character and stuff that you are like seeing the way he plays different people against each other, mm. the way that he expertly manipulates other characters with him. It's just fascinating. Mm. And so because the original Gladiator doesn't have that element for me, I'm yeah. like, maybe I like Gladiator 2 more because it's just Whoa. like it's got something in it that I flat out adore. Is that mm. true? Yeah. I feel like he was so free on screen. Mm. Like he felt mm. fully in control every single time he was up there. And I feel like – Really, Scott was just like, oh, yeah, you do whatever do yeah. whatever you want to do. I'm actually going to go over here. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was so fun to watch him. It was so fun. And he's like, he was so camp and mm. gay yeah. and stuff as well, mm. which was just gorgeous. I love it. Well, I heard that they just, they cut out a gay kiss from yeah, the movie. Really? He's, and oh, he's real I, mad about it. Mm. Oh. Denzel's all over it. The socials being like, mm. oh, maybe it was one in, it yeah. was one interview, yeah. <laughs> and that's and it's replayed viral. several times yeah. on the reels. Um, but yeah, he's uh, said that there was actually a, a male kiss scene that his character does, and they cut mm. it, and he was he's like pussies, homophobia. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon it would have been like with that character would've that made total sense. he has. Like, cause it's so funny. There's like this scene. It's the character. It must be one of those characters that he's manipulating that he's very close mm. with. Mm. Um, and they have like this crazy chemistry together where it's like, what? I could watch this Denzel and this old English guy be on yeah. like with each other a thousand times. I go, well, how is this the most electrifying pairing I've ever seen? They yeah. had more chemistry mm. than Paul Mezcal and his lady who passed at the start. Oh, mm. big time. My they were brother and sister. Come on. Yeah, yeah I love that. I love that kind of stuff, especially in this universe. You love to see the brothers and sisters hook up in this ancient Rome shit. One of the things, you know, not fictional from the time. Yeah. That's true. Oh, yeah, exactly. It was considered erotic and titillating back then. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Denzel, absolute breakout mm. star of this of this film. And breakout you- star. Brett. <laughs> Detect a huge career for this guy going yeah. ahead. Not unlike George Clooney mm. in ER, <laughs> Mrs. Denzel's big I role. Think he's gonna be big after this. <laughs> Tell you I love um Fred Henrik. Who I didn't. Yes. Henrich? Henrik? Is he the short king? Yes. 
the short king, literally. <laughs> short emperor. Yeah, the short emperor. He was my absolute favourite too. Yes. Mm. He was in White Lotus season one. Yes. I and that's the only other time I've seen Sydney Sweeney's him. brother. Yes. Sydney Sweeney's brother in White Lotus See, season one. How do you know that? Because that's a TV show. I've, yeah. seen, it, I've seen a few TV shows. Okay. Yeah, I've seen well, 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 well. <laughs> pick one show a year to <laughs> tune into and that's it. Add to my repertoire. And I, the first I time I saw him. him was in this movie called uh, with Amy Adams ah. called it's not a great movie but mm. he's electric in it it's called The Woman in the Window okay and oh. it's kind of like a Hitchcock riff and he plays yeah. this weird teenager and I was like this that guy's got something this yeah. guy is he's wackadoo he loves to play a weird teenager yeah. he's a bit of a Paul Dano I get the same mm. like kind of vibes mm. just yeah like always probably going to play a little weirdo character yeah, yeah. And I thought that that was also nice playing him and Joe Quinn playing oh. like these these oddball emperors that are like they are now the o- occupying the mm. throne and they're in the they're, psycho. They've definitely got some weird intermingling between mm. them <laughs> with the DNA's. And yeah, the DNA's <laughs> yeah. been all over the place, all <laughs> over them. And they all are that not stuff. the right color. Yeah, Let's just strange. say that. Following from Gladiator One, where mm. Joaquin Phoenix's character mm. was all grey, mm. still very attractive. Yes. though. and that's something for me to sort through yes of course but in this one they kept that the kings yeah. are a weird color they're odd they are golden yet sickly you yes, know like it's sickly. very odd not right but i found that very <laughs> fun and interesting like i think the there's so many elements in this that i found incredibly fun like mm. and mm. i thought the action sequences inside the coliseum uh i love that boats the boat battle that they had in the coliseum which is real they did that shit back then i see i sorry what they used to flood the Colosseums. They put sharks in. They put boats in. They did not put sharks they in, did. did they? That's no, all real. They didn't put sharks in. They didn't do. They did. Did no. sharks exist back then? Okay, you know what? Sharks are the oldest creatures <laughs> on planet Earth. <laughs> yeah. They're millions of years old. I thought that was prostitution. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. But I think they put sharks in. Really? Oh, okay. my God. Okay. But they did put the ships in. They did put the ships I See, because I've talked to too many uh, straight white boys about this movie. And so I've had <laughs> mm. about five or six different. Because I, my advice when I tell people, I was like, it's a good, fun movie. When the sharks show up, go to the bathroom. Because for <laughs> wow. me, it was a touch. Well, you, I was like, you have to go to the bathroom at some point. At you know? some point, And that's the point that I would pick. Because yeah. to me, I was like, this is too much. Come yeah. on. Silly. For real. Silly. Uh, but then when I've told uh, these straight white boys that, half of them has said, what are you talking about? The sharks were actually, out of the five I told, two were like, the sharks are in there. Three were like, the sharks are not in there. So I'm just going off majority of my research mm. of, you know, the accounts I've heard from yeah. men who definitely have researched the <laughs> wow. and were there. I would say that I'm one, must be one of the rare people when, you know, the, the, how often you think about the Roman empire, I'd say very little. Mm. I'd so, say yeah. almost at all, but I would bet, you know, my caveat to that is definitely the, the people that would answer that question less than once a week or whatever <laughs> would be Greek people because we're like, no, exactly. we've got our own we've got shit. Our own <laughs> shit. <laughs> we've got our own shit that we think about. Like, How often do I think about that. Alexander the Great? Mm. Every single day. That's wow. what I'm named after. Wow. I'm wearing an Alexander the Great medallion and ring. That's, so that's different, you know? So that's what would different. you call his era? Like if you were to say like, what's your Roman Empire? I would say probably Alexander the Great. Just as a Yeah, yeah as because a he was he's a conqueror. He was mm. gay. He was awesome. Um, That's yeah. cool. That's really cool. Yeah, Aristotle was his teacher. Wow. Oh, oh, nice. He sounds yeah. like a very Denzel type. That's you know, what I'm Colin picturing. Colin Farrell played him in a movie. <gasps> they love to get the Irish boys to come do this <laughs> stuff, do you know? Stuff. <laughs> they get the Irish boys to <laughs> come the play ethnics. the ancients. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of, Paul Mescal. So I don't have a much of a relationship with him. I've never mm. seen him in mm-hmm. anything before. I think he was fine in this. Mm. But as a fan, how did you find him? I mean, in normal people, he is... Re- you can't take your eyes off. Yeah, He's yeah. abnormal. Yeah. Ah. yeah. He's special, in fact. Ironic. Yeah. And so I had very high expectations for this. I think he did a good job. I think mm-hmm. a lot rested on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. But I think anyone who's on the same bill as Denzel Washington, it's yeah. like you are you're gonna have to fight yeah. To, yeah. for this. Mm. He's I think he's a very fine actor. And it's interesting to see him get the chance to make this movie star turn. Mm. Um right. I think like when you watch the original Gladiator. Russell Crowe is undeniable, right? Yeah. See, I yeah, it I is love just the like a, perf- a perfect Gladiator. meeting of uh, actor. 
who's like what, what, at that time he's undeniable one of the greatest actors mm. in the world mm. at that time. And then this role, it's just like he he's chance to be a movie star. Like and it's, it's the hottest he's ever been. Yeah, it's mm. incredible. Oof. Yeah, and I think that with Paul Mescal, I think it's actually a harder character for him to play. Mm. Like it's not he's maybe not given enough material to f- have full fledged emotional arc like there's emotional moments but mm-hmm. you kind of it's hard to feel the motivation mm. into them and read into them a lot of the time yeah but that's because there's so much there's a lot going on in the plot of this film mm. and he's a little bit outside of the plot mm. almost, yeah you know? it feels like his backstory in this compared to marcus with aurelius aurelius sorry for a second i thought there was like a mm. real emperor and i was like oh wait is it i've locked into I'm knowledge now, but <laughs> anyway um <laughs> Russell Crowe's character, mm. compared to him, his backstory is more complicated but mm. less compelling. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so there's, like, quite a bit of exposition going on in his story as to why he's doing what he's doing. But also I'm kind of like I don't get – there's not much emotion attached mm. to it, so it's harder for him to pull you in, mm. that yeah. makes sense. And I, I agree. I think the plot was not – I'm not going to say too busy, but it was mm. very busy. Mm. And so for me, when like spoilers, 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 if you haven't seen it, but when the big reveal comes where that he's the lady's son mm. and they have the confrontation about it, I was wanting mm. so much more from that moment. Yeah. It just kind of felt like maybe I'd missed the original reunion. I don't know. It just felt like this is like such a huge, whoa, what? Yeah. Mm. And this is what the whole also, movie's about. And in the original, and I'm bit, like, I uh, saw the original like the night before again. I go, uh, did they reveal that Maximus is his dad in that? That's what that? I was trying to remember. Mm. I, go, I go, I don't know. But yeah. so it's kind of like. It's almost like it's assumed. But I go. I didn't even know if that was that ever. They fucked. I didn't know they something. fucked. Oh, they were together oh, wait, they before. Were together. But That's right. I, yeah. They did. But then he. But it's like. Oh, but then Maximus is, has this beautiful dead wife and dead son, son and stuff. Yeah. So you're like, oh, I don't know. It was just those things. Mm. I go. Oh, I don't know. There's, but there's people that must be gladiator nerds that are like that have just. Oh yes. They got it. Yeah. Of yeah. Of course, you know. You're that right. was a lot of me sitting in the cinema being like, wait, does this make? Does this match up? I can't really. Mm. But also, I, I don't really. Ah, yeah. Did you guys ever do Gladiator back on the old podcast? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, we, we really found liked it, it quite horny. Yeah, yeah. we really liked it. It was very horny. This one was not as horny as I thought it was going to be. Considering mm. the yeah. cast. Exactly. Hotties galore. Where, okay, can I say Pedro Where himself? Where was Pedro Pascal in this? Yeah. Mm. He was in it for, like doing a great job. He did a good job. But I feel like he was in it for all of five minutes. Mm. Mm. And – wasn't as as because uh, everyone like you know there's something for the for the mums and the daughters mm. you know there's a daddy and a daddy yeah. Yeah. you can take stuff. your mum and get horny at the cinema wow. with her that isn't was that cool it, I feel. <laughs> 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 but I didn't get a horn vibe from Pedro in this film no. which was disappointing well, no, I have to say rare, that's kind rare of his for thing. him mm. wow mm. but he what was a good you? husband he's he was. a great husband yeah. Which the ladies do famously exactly. love. We do like that. <laughs> love it. I love to see a beautiful, good husband. Love a loyal yeah. man. But yeah, and mm. I was th- thinking that Paul would be a lot sexier, mm. and he was hot. But I was like, I'm not like leaving the cinema, being like, don't make mm. eye contact with me. Yes. <laughs> I need to go home right now. Whereas I felt that about Russell after the first one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But um, I think my two favorite characters were the kings. Mm. I yep. loved seeing them on screen and how weird they are. I loved their dynamic together and the Stranger Things guy with the White Lotus guy. Yeah. They were definitely my favorite. And more representation for syphilis madness. Yeah. Yes. That's why everyone yes. was so crazy by then. Everyone had syphilis to the gills. Yeah. And That's was what I love. making it's them bananas. Crazy. Yeah. I like the baboon. The sure. baboon scene was scary to me. It was me. so scary. That was yeah. very scary, those baboons. Yeah, I forgot about them. I'll never forget them. I forget <laughs> them every night. They were scary. Dreams. There was a bit of, it was a bit, I mean, I have layperson eyes, but to me it felt quite CGI-y. Oh, that, yeah, they didn't get real baboons. No, I not those fellas. But, like, yeah. it, it was obvious. I will say some yeah, of the CGI yeah. in this was Quite Not bad. great, yeah. But I think when you go back and watch the original Gladiator, it's the same shit, you yeah. know. Like aesthetically, mm. you go, there's a lot of CGI in this shit. You know? Actually, I have a question for you, Lexi. Something that I've seen online recently is that people are saying that CGI now is so much worse than CGI mm. back, and they use Pirates of the Caribbean yep. as the example. Mm. I don't know what that's what, what the cause is. Would you do you feel that way? Um, I think it's interesting to point out because I think that. Back in the early days of CGI, 
or I'd say the first 10 so years of CGI in cinema um, from, if I think of like Jurassic, if you think of Jurassic Park as like the starting point Mm -hmm. of like CGI prominence in cinema, Mm -hmm. I would say that first 10 or so years, it is um, a lot of CGI incorporated with practical effects as well, but also usually being in conjunction with, real like sets and stuff like that prosthetics mm. and, stuff and as well. prosthetics okay. or like having to uh be as seamless as possible you know like you think about Gollum and you mm. know they're trying to make Gollum look real yeah. they're trying yeah. to they're trying to uh it's all in aid of a sense of realism or whatever mm. but now when you see a lot of CGI movies uh it'll be like Marvel or something like that where the set is fake as well. Like everything yeah. is CGI right. and even a costume that someone is wearing is CGI and it's yeah. just their head popping out that's real or whatever. Mm. Um, so I think there's things like that where it becomes most of the image that you're seeing is CGI mm. instead of being parts of the image that you're seeing a CGI. So I think there's elements to that where there's less reality for your eye to focus on. Mm. So you're, what you end up seeing feels uncanny and stops ah. feeling real. Like the same way that you watch the like, Polar Express mm. and go, wow, <laughs> nothing feels actual real. Mm. Yeah. So it's probably a similar feeling. Right. So it's not necessarily that it's worse now. It's just that it's, Mm. So different because it's being used almost a hundred percent. Yeah, mm. I'm, that's for, I'm don't know that's for really, sure. That's fascinating. That's I the like way that. I'm thinking about. It. Like, if you were to watch um, Lord of the Rings and then watch The Hobbit, yeah. they're made in two different eras of CGI mm. use, like ten years apart or so. Uh, like The Hobbit, the or Lord of the Rings, you go everything feel, feels real and practical. The Hobbit, there's a little bit more CGI, and there's mm. like a, maybe you feel a bit. Air, uh, floaty or airy because the mm. physics are less grounded in reality. That's usually a thing that can kind of put you off it if the physics mm. doesn't feel real for it. Yeah, I know that. Um, I feel really sorry for actors when you see behind the scenes and mm. it's just them in a big oh. green room yeah. wearing a green suit. I'm like, you would feel insane. Yeah. And Jenna Ortega was saying she's like, I loved working on Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice because mm. it's so, most of it is practical effects, and she's like. Even though it's like I'm talking to a puppet, it's like I'm talking to a face at yeah. least instead yeah. of a tennis ball on a yeah. stick. Interesting. Thank you. That was Thank fascinating. You. I've been wonder- thinking about that a lot. because Thank the- you, King Cinephile. Thank you, Daddy <laughs> Cinephile. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. No, thank you. You're Please. welcome. Thank you. That's so nice. I wish I had a wide shot to grab that. <laughs> 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 Well, do we do closing thoughts? Is there any things you want to talk about in the film? Um, no, no, in particular. I think it's been interesting seeing the response to this film. To me, it's like I, I it's so similar to the first one that yeah. I don't know if people. It's mm. hard to recommend because I go, if you've seen the first one and you love it, maybe you will love it because it's just more of the same. Yeah. But also it's not like adding too much to it. You mm. might feel too repetitive. Yeah. Mm. But I do I don't know. I genuinely think to an extent there's something worth watching just to see Denzel yeah. in this film, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. you know, if there's it's hard I don't know. I'm I've always been that kind of movie enjoyer, the film enjoyer. Uh, that if there's one thing that I love about the movie, it's hard for me not to like the film. Yeah. Mm. And I think there's mm. that element, I really just go. Do I like this more than the original? I actually mm. might because I enjoy watching it more because Denzel Washington is awesome in it. Yeah. Yeah. And the original doesn't have that thing for me. So I don't know, apart from like maybe Oliver Reed feels that same, mm. literally that same character role and function. And I love that performance. I think it's the best performance in that movie. But I'd say another element that I missed is in that original Gladiator, you've got that Lisa Gerrard score, the Australian <gasps> oh. singer who did the music with Hans Zimmer oh my as gosh, his of collaborator. Course, that ethereal, and just that beautiful. Voice. Oh, yeah. And it starts like the, it kickstarts this whole uh, music in cinema movement that's basically exploiting and aping that sound of like oh. that that beautiful like said ethereal voice. Yeah you know, muttering and hum, mm. harmoniously singing and stuff. I go, well, far out. When I rewatch Gladiator, I go, it is undeniable how mm. cool that sounds and how engrossing and how unique it feels in that movie. And there's elements of here, but I go, ah, oh, that would have, that could have taken a whole movie up an extra yeah. level. Just go, let's bring Lisa Gerard back the whole time. Yeah, um, interesting. Yeah, I just, I don't know. That's, mm. 
Yeah, that's that's awesome. Mm. That's great. Good on your Paul Mescal. I'm glad to see you get into yeah. the big leagues. Yeah. Hopefully, it makes because uh, he's got such a passion for independent storytelling and cinema oh. that hopefully it uh, hopefully this movie becomes a big ass hit and it lets him ignite the fires of many more independent films to be made. Fuck yeah. Hopefully, I would love to see him work with um, the After Sun filmmaker again. It feels like they yes. have a great filmmaking collaborative uh, I relationship. I want to watch that now after mm. seeing this because I'm like, I know that he's great and mm. I need to be reminded. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you will love that movie. Devastate, yeah. It will devastate you. Um, yeah. yeah okay. Both of you will be devastated by it. But great, great film. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to pencil the time where I'm like, when am I going to feel like yeah. a big cry? Good yeah. Christmas cry, you know? <gasps> Get that post-Christmas <laughs> cry yeah. out. You yeah. do it in the, Christ- the, the, the taint of the year. Mm, the, exactly. That, that nothing, the year. Where taint nothing Christmas, week. a taint New Year. That nothing week mm, where exactly. time and space don't exist. Mm. Exactly. I love that little period. That's my favourite time. It is. It honestly feel like, it feels like time stops. Exactly. Like doesn't, that week doesn't matter. It, there was yeah, one weird. year where we got COVID locked down oh, during shit. that time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, don't matter. We'll just... Yeah. yeah, we're just gonna watch crap anyway. Yeah, yeah. very different from any other period. It's of the like year. okay, we got New Year's Eve at home. Shall we try and uh, that line lovely, up when actually. Harry met Sally <laughs> with the New Year's of that? Uh-huh. With the same midnight drop in real life. Okay, I want to do that. Yeah, we did it. Yay! Yeah. Yay. <laughs> you know, hopefully we never have to do it again. <laughs> but um, yeah. Knock on wood. Uh, all right, shall we rate it? Shall we rate? How many? Chiseled thighs. Yeah. Oh I tell you what, there was There's a lot of nice thighs in this movie. Thighs. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Good thigh picture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, how many chiseled thighs? I give it like, I'm going to go straight down the middle, two and a half. Mm. Very okay. boring, but that is how I felt about this film. Mm. I wasn't bored, mm. but just I felt middle. I just felt very middle. Yeah. Mm. Oh, fuck. I thought of a better rating. Okay, go again. How many syphilis monkey companions? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Two and a half syphilis monkey companions. Two and a half. You got two baboons and then one little spider a little monkey. Tiny wow. little guy. Nice. But they're all crazy. Nice. <laughs> I think I have to fully agree yeah. with it. I think if you, again, if you love mm. the first one, yeah. you'll like this. Yeah. But for me, I uh, like the first one because it made me horny. And then mm. this mm. one didn't. Do yeah. the same this thing. This one didn't make you horny did much. Wow. Horny. Yeah. I mean, neither did me. So I'm like, yeah, I guess <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised by that. Imagine That's... if all of us in that row were horny. Yeah. Once, that'd be oh, my a bit oh, my God. Oh, my God. The vapors are escaping <laughs> this room. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably say maybe I nudge it slightly above because of Denzel. So maybe I'll just sure. go three. Three baboons. Yeah, three baboons. But I'm also three for the original. I would say three for mm. Gladiator mm. one. I'll be at three. Mm. But it's just not my cup of tea. But I guess there's some things that are undeniable about it where I go, I have to give it a little something extra, you know? Yeah. 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 Oh, well, that's enough, you know, yeah. syphilis companion monkeys. I wouldn't want to be in yeah. an arena with all of them. A, I would give it a dispassionate three. Yeah, <laughs> Disp- <laughs> yeah a dispassionate three. They're sleepy monkeys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Alexi Tolly. Oh, my pleasure. I love you guys. I love potting for you. I love hanging out with you guys. Yay, so, my pleasure. Thank, thank you for having me in. Thank Where you. can people find you? What do you have coming up? Uh, you can check out the last video store, my podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. On and whatever weird podcast app you use, where you have to put the RSV S feed in yourself <laughs> and mm-hmm. use it that way, you're welcome to do that. I'll allow it. Uh, it's on YouTube. Do you know the, the RSS off by heart? Yes. Or is that something w- I should? W- <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's also on YouTube at the Batuta Advocate YouTube channel. It's on Instagram Reels <gasps> at Las Vegas Store Batuta. Wow. Um, if you want to see the clips of me. Starry eyed gazing at Jonathan Reese Myers. <laughs> That's all up on there. And um, uh, next year, haven't we said this on my own podcast? Yet? Oh my God. Excuse yeah, us. yeah. I am I'm doing so excited. the comedy festivals. Yeah. Live. I've never done them. IRL, I've never IRL. done the comedy IRL. festivals. Oh, yes. But me and Zachary and Zach- Ruane have written and starring in a live documentary play called Refused Classification. Oh, my God. You we guys can promise in you our listeners are already yeah. very well aware of this. We Whoa. have spoken at length. We loved it so Whoa. much. So funny. You. If you're in any of the cities it's playing, go and see it. It's yeah. so fun. And it's only, I love that Like we saw literally the first or second show. And I think it came to first night. That's I think crazy. So. Yeah, I think and it was so you're the first you guys night. are going to go tour festivals. So, like, this show is only going to get better and better. I cannot even imagine how tight it's fucking going to yeah. be. Oh, by the yeah. End. Or could get looser. Or could get, get looser. Yeah. Yeah. Not that it wasn't tight, but I just mean, like, 
it's gonna I just I yeah. love the idea of seeing a show like this and how it's gonna evolve oh, thank you. Uh, yeah I can't thank wait to like I'll like see it at the end yeah as well. Well, oh that's very nice you say so I'm very yeah we're gonna do Melbourne I think we'll do Adelaide Whoa. yeah we're we'll gonna do Adelaide and we'll do Sydney for sure great I would love to do Brisbane Brisbane, Brisbane. It's it's fun. Fun. pick yeah. up the phone what are you yeah, doing yeah let us know about Brisbane and mm. that's a good festival too yeah, that's shout out to it. Brisbane Comedy Festival yeah I love Brisbane so I'm like it'll be great to go up there yeah, yeah. that's it so check out Refuse Classification next year to Comedy Festivals near you hell yes alright and um, for our YouTube listeners uh, the camera on <laughs> Beck and I just died so let's go over oh okay I was gonna say Jill, can I, what about if I jump on this <laughs> and I just start feeling oh yeah uh-huh. um, <laughs> yes. thank you so much for joining us Alexi we love you. We love you.